Back in 1980, a Japanese toy company was trying to break into the arcade business, but their early arcade boxes just weren't cutting it. In particular, a game called Radar Scope basically crashed in the international market. It was a precursor to Galaga, and it was considerably less appealing. Not giving up, Nintendo tasked two young developers with transforming Radar Scope into something better. One was Gunpei Yokoi, the creator of Game & Watch, and the other was Shigeru Miyamoto, who was about to create the most famous video game character of all time. Miyamoto scrapped Radar Scope's sci-fi aesthetic and tried to make a game based off the cartoon show Popeye. Nintendo couldn't secure the licensing, so instead came Mr. Video, who was renamed Jumpman, who was renamed again to Mario. Mario would become a gaming icon and appear in over 200 games as well as other media. As a hero, as a villain, and as a dancing sensation. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go do the Mario. No, nobody. Okay. Oh, and as the face of one of the biggest fighting game titles on the planet. That's right. This is a history of the original Smash Bro and his role in the competitive scene. It's me, Mario. We're gonna cover as much of Mario's role in Smash as we can, which isn't gonna be everything. This character's been in every Smash iteration, after all. If you're interested in learning more about how to master Mario, or any character in Ultimate, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. There, you can check out a character guide or get help from a coach. If you're just looking for friendlies, you can find the Pro Guides community on Discord and Reddit too. In the earliest days of the Smash community, Nintendo's mascot was off to a hot start, but not in the game you'd think. The competitive Smash community didn't come into its own until Melee. Melee's competitive scene did so well by the mid-2000s that it prompted players to revisit Competitive 64, including Isaiah, the godfather of Competitive Falcon, but we'll get to that. For now, it's the earliest days of Melee, and Matt Dahlgren, or Matt DZ, is hosting tournaments in California. He's also doing well in them, playing a mix of Mario and Fox. In Melee's youngest meta, Mario's basic toolset helps him succeed. His cape reflector is also stronger in a meta with items on. And other players like Green Mario and Eggs, with a Z, are doing well with him too. Hit the fast forward button on Melee's meta and Mario cools off. As players everywhere optimize Melee's insane punish game, it's clear Mario's out of his depth. He lacks Falcon's big hits, Sheik's speed, Marf's disjoints, Puff's gimps and early KOs, or the incredible frame data of the species. Mario is average, and in Melee, average is bad. Mario's overly basic kit also makes him super vulnerable to camping. Fox, Sheik, and Falcon can bait and punish him, Marth can outspace him, and Peach and Puff can use air mobility to force him to overextend. Melee Mario did have combos, chain grabbing, and cape edge guards. Those strengths helped a rookie get 9th at Momocon in Dreamhack Atlanta and 33rd at Shine in CEO in 2019. They'd also help Egg secure upsets over Silent Wolf and Bladewise in the mid 2000s era of Melee. But in the modern era of Melee, Mario's best chance is hoping that medical school pays off. Dr. Mario is the real Mario to watch. Shroomed was a top 10 caliber player with Dr. Mario in 2013 before switching to Sheik, and Shroomed notably did not fully optimize Doc. Now Franz, a young prodigy, is picking up where Shroomed left off. So what makes Doc better? Well, it's the little things. Dr. Mario has better airspeed and trajectories on some of his moves, so he has more reliable combos and kill confirms. Dr. Mario's pills have better angles, damage, and size, making them all around better. His cape has a bigger vertical hitbox, which makes it better for edge guarding too. And finally, Dr. Mario has this weird one-frame technique called the up B cancel. The OG Mario would see more sustained success in the OG Smash. In Smash 64, Mario was a solid mid-tier for a long time. Green Mario did well with him in 2007, as did Nintendude in 2010. But in 2011, Mario would jump up the rank and land in the same tier as Captain Falcon. And that was because of the top tiers. Smash 64 has a very strong top four characters, Pikachu, Kirby, Falcon, and Fox. Mario came into vogue as a strong secondary character because the American 64 community felt he went even with all those characters except Pikachu. On a mechanical level, Mario was an odd but good fit too. Given 64's insane hit stun and total lack of defensive options, Mario's punish game was a bit weak. However, Mario had a surprisingly sturdy defensive game. 
You think his up special is good now? Yeah, in 64 it was frame 2 and had invincibility, making it one of the game's few combo breakers. His up smash was good out of shield. His down special was Luigi Cyclone, giving him a good recovery. And his down air was a great landing tool that also had incredible shield pressure. So Mario was the character you could pick to help your main out. Or if you were Isaiah, Mario was the character you could use to make Grand Finals at Apex 2013. In a big surprise move, Isaiah busted out Nintendo's franchise character at one of the biggest Smash tournaments ever. He beat Super Boom Fans Falcon using Mario's great edge guarding tools. However, Mario would fall back down to mid-tier by 2015, and there are a few reasons for that. First, optimized punish games were the future, and Mario's punishes weren't top tier. Second, Mario might have lost good stages. It's hard to say for sure, but Mario seemed to benefit from the vertical platform layouts on Hyrule Castle and Congo Jungle. In modern 64, the stage list is as follows. <coughs> Dreamland? That's it. That's the only competitively viable stage. And third, his mains focused on other characters. If you look at the most recent 64 rankings, Mario's not even used as a secondary as often. Notable Mario mains like Nintendude switched off the character. However, 64 still has solid Mario mains like Kimimaru and Faust. In 64, Mario has a good projectile, good grab, and decently large quick hitboxes. In Melee, Mario still has some of those strengths, but in a game where characters have great grabs, great projectiles, and great hitboxes. In Brawl, Nintendo added more projectiles, more disjoints, and more grab shenanigans, while mostly taking things away from Mario. Mario's down special changed to Flood, which was a straight nerf to his recovery. Flood didn't help his neutral much either, as it didn't have the oomph it has in Ultimate. A lot of his moves had insanely small hitboxes and weird knockback patterns too. His only saving grace was a good back air, a solid up air, and some alright early percent combos. In the peak Brawl days, Mario couldn't have bought a top player with all the gold coins in the Mushroom Kingdom. After three games, Nintendo finally hit the mark with their signature character. In Smash 4, they made him into an incredible all-arounder, but with a touch of aerial mobility that felt fitting to the King of Platformers. Couple that aerial mobility with knockback changes on his moves and hit-stun changes in the game's engine, and you had a potent combo character too. It didn't take long for Mario to rise to the top of tier lists. He never had the raw meta power of Sheik, Diddy Kong, or Zero Suit Samus, but he was strong, particularly in 2016, prior to the optimization of Cloud and Bayonetta. Mario consistently had record-breaking years in Smash 4. CEO 2016 was won primarily with Mario taking down top 10 players like DeBuzz and Mr. R. The character was even on the precipice of being used to get the coveted number one rank on the PGR, with victories at Get On My Level, Smash and & Splash, and EVO in 2016. It was all made possible using the tech that made Mario great. Insane grab combos. Turnaround up smash. Flood stage control. Great frame traps. Up B rage combos. Strong kill options. The success didn't quite last. Mario struggled to compete with Smash 4's best characters, and that only became clearer with optimization. Sonic and Sheik had speed, Bayo and ZSS had combos, Cloud and Marth had disjoints, Rosa and Diddy had stage control. Mario had a lot, but not enough in any one area to reach the top. Plus, he struggled to get in and get that grab combo started. Mario may have gotten outpaced in Smash 4, but Nintendo discovered a winning formula for the character. In Ultimate, Mario's a consensus high to top tier character with the competitive results to match. His kit is simple enough for the 8 year old that loves Mario to play him, and deep enough for the 20 year old that loves competitive Smash to master him. In terms of changes, Mario had a lot of trade offs in Ultimate's engine. But that made Mario even better at edgeguarding, especially since Ultimate buffed the knockback on Flood. Nerfs to grab in Ultimate meant that Mario couldn't shield grab opponents like he did in Smash 4. However, that made up specials and up smashes super important as out of shield options. Guess who has a frame 3 up special and a partially intangible up smash? Ultimate reduced the vertical combo potential that nearly broke the Smash 4 community. So Mario doesn't have up tilt vortexes and usually can't kill off an up special if the opponent has good DI. Usually. But in exchange, Mario now has insane horizontal combos, including a pretty famous one where he touches you and you die! Despite having a touch of death combo, Mario still struggles to kill. 
His back throw, back air, and up smash aren't as potent as in Smash 4. In Smash 4, a lot of Mario's neutral was pivoting, so his back faced his opponents. From there, he could land the strong hit of his up smash or back air. Mario can do this in Ultimate, but the faster engine means players can counter it more easily. In the early Ultimate meta, those changes to Mario's neutral patterns and kill options really hurt. He dropped to mid-tier on some lists because he couldn't kill and struggled with a roster full of disjoints. Most of the big-name Mario mains from Smash 4 opted for other characters moving into Ultimate. Mario needed a new champion, and that would be Dark Wizzy. Dark Wizzy mained the character in Smash 4 and was well-situated to become the world's best Mario, but he needed to adjust to Ultimate's changes. In the first six months, Dark Wizzy did well, but couldn't quite make top eights. His match against Salem showed why. Salem could pin Mario down with Link's disjoints, projectiles, and active hitboxes. While Mario's moves are fast, their lack of range means they could get stuffed out by active and large aerials like Link's Nair. Mario's fireballs also couldn't rival Link's projectiles. Dark Wizzy tried to close the distance to stop getting pinballed by projectiles, but Salem stuffed the approach. Mario's rushdown didn't look great. With a solidly average run speed and a lack of big hitboxes, it was hard to see how Mario would get in on Ultimate's many strong defensive characters. Old options like turnaround back airs weren't working either. Dark Wizzy lost 3-1, and Mario looked a little worse than in Smash 4. But as with a lot of characters, Mario wasn't worse. He was just different. Once Dark Wizzy learned the character's new patterns, he started getting top 8s at big tournaments. To see his adjustments, take a look at how he 3 0s tweak in the first set of Grand Finals at Glitch 8. In Ultimate, Mario's down air and neutral air both got buffed with longer duration. So, Dark Wizzy uses a lot of rising down airs to control space instead of rising bears. To make his aggression safe, he uses falling back airs to reduce end lag, shielding or rolling when he lands. And to land or stuff an opponent's move, he uses neutral air because it's very fast and active, making it hard to beat. He uses Flood a lot more as a way to get stage control. Wizzy pushes his opponents back, which means they can't dictate the pace like Salem did with Link. At a high level, Flood is great at breaking up an opponent's game plan on offense or defense. Some things do stay the same, like Dark Wizzy using up smash and back air for kills. But now he uses them as great ledge trap options, and he isn't approaching with them like in Smash 4. Understanding Dark Wizzy is a great way to understand Ultimate's Mario as a whole. What we see is maybe the most versatile iteration of the character. This is a character that can now play more patiently and has a few ways to get in. Charging Flood in the corner is a more real option, as is carefully placing a few fireballs, as is caping a few projectiles. Approaching with up smashes and back airs won't cut it, but now Mario can use down air and neutral air to mix up his approaches and landings. Down and forward air are still on the table as niche kill options too, down air as a confirm or raw option, and forward air as an edge guarding tool. Mario's rewards for getting in are as good, if not better, than in Smash 4, especially if a platform combo is on the table. But now the rest of his game feels even more fleshed out. It's hard to say if it'll stay that way. Ultimate is a playground of overloaded toolkits, so Mario could get outpaced again. But right now, he's at a great spot. According to character data collected by Bernard's Loop and Orion Rank, Mario is one of the more popular characters. He's also pretty common on regional power rankings. And on top of Dark Wizzy's success, you've probably seen Prodigy beat Leo with Mario. You might have seen Louie Money and Stroder use him as a secondary too. In Ultimate, we see the result of a lot of trial and error with Nintendo's biggest character. In 64, he fit well as a solid secondary character because the cast wasn't that extravagant. As Smash built out in Melee and Brawl, Mario's bread and butter kit couldn't keep up. In Smash 4, Nintendo found a good blueprint for Mario as a well-rounded character with great mobility and combos. And in Ultimate, Nintendo tweaked the formula to keep him well-rounded but make him less linear. The balance feels fitting for a character like Mario. The limitations of his retro origins come through very cleanly in a game that just added a character with massive slinkies for arms. But he also has those core strengths that made him an arcade hit. He's above average at almost everything, and he's pure fun to watch or play. So what are your thoughts of Mario throughout all of the Smash games? Let us know in the comments below, along with what character you'd like to see us do next. We're excited to continue this story series with all of you next time on Pro Guides. Be sure to subscribe to know right when it's up.